Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. I've been making art tutorial videos here on YouTube for a few years now, but I've never really made an introduction style video where I talk about my background. So as I paint today, that's what I'm going to do. This drawing is a little gift for a neighbour who recently did something nice for us. And because I'm using a reference photo that's not my own, this one won't be available for purchase anywhere. But if you like what I make, there's a lot of art available on my website and reproduction prints on Redbubble. So check out the links in the video description if you're interested. I've been obsessed with making art for as long as I can remember. I was a kid in the 80s and a teenager in the 90s, and when my brothers and sisters headed for the toy aisles at the shops, I went directly to the stationery section. I loved colouring books, watercolour sets, pencils and textures, and I was always happiest when I was drawing something. I fell in love with printmaking at high school because the head of our art department was a printmaker and we had a couple of little etching presses in our art rooms. I made my first lino cut when I was 13 years old and I was hooked immediately. Because we had that little etching press at school, I just kind of assumed that everybody knew about printmaking and it wasn't until my final year of high school when some students from one of the other schools came to join us for some extracurricular drawing classes and asked what the press was that I realised printmaking was kind of a niche thing. After high school I intended on studying printmaking at the university in my hometown, but that year they cut printmaking as a major, so my option was to study drawing there and minor in printmaking. I was the fifth of six kids and leaving my country town to study in Melbourne wasn't really an option financially, but I'd applied for an advertising course at RMIT anyway because it looked creatively interesting. And when my parents sat in on the information session with me, they turned around and told me that I had to go and do that course if I got in. I think the idea that I'd have a chance at actual employment, even if I'd have to leave home and spend more money to do it, was pretty enticing. Anyway, I didn't think I had a hope in hell of getting into that course. Thousands of people apply and they only took 40 students and I had to look up what the word copywriting meant in the dictionary before my interview. But I guess they saw something in my fine art folio that they liked and I got in. So the week I turned 18, I moved out of my hometown to the big city and studied advertising for three years. I don't work in advertising anymore, but through that course, I learned a lot that's been really useful in other areas of my art career, primarily about how to effectively communicate my ideas. I also first learned about television production during that course, back at a time when digital cameras didn't exist and our video cameras still used tapes. But I still use the fundamentals from that class every day when I'm making videos for this channel. I studied copywriting, art direction, illustration and photography during that course as well. And then I worked for a few years in a big advertising agency as a writer. Eventually I left the advertising industry for a variety of reasons and I spent some time working in a remote Aboriginal community in the Northern Territory of Australia, tutoring in literacy and numeracy. My sister was a teacher at the school there and wanted to take her class into Charles Darwin University for an intensive printmaking course. So I was employed again as a tutor to help the girls with their artwork and showing them different ways that they could share and sell their art online. That experience was really enjoyable and I started taking a more serious and professional approach to being an artist around that time. I had my first solo painting exhibition and I started taking part in group shows and I made plans to go back to uni and study fine art, which is what I'd always wanted to do. The first time I applied to uni, I put all my eggs in one basket and only applied to the Victorian College of the Arts in Melbourne, and they flat out rejected me. The next year I applied again, but I also applied for two other universities at the same time. 
BCA gave me a man maybe response that time, but I was straight up accepted to the other two courses and ended up accepting my offer for printmaking at RMIT University in Melbourne, which is the university I'd previously been to. I'm really glad I did because, in retrospect, RMIT was a much better fit for me. I studied printmaking as an undergraduate for three years, learning all about etching, lino cut, wood cut, lithography, screen printing and artist books, so pretty much all the things that I teach you about on this channel. I applied to do my honours year at the end of my undergrad, but had idiotically misread the application due date and handed it in a day too late. They never outright rejected me though, and a few weeks before the start of the next school year, I got a call from the uni telling me that if I wanted to skip honours and go straight into a master's course, I should get an application in the next day. A week later I'd been accepted to study for a Master of Fine Art degree part-time over two years, but I'd also just signed a contract to work for a year in the collections at the State Library of Victoria. logistics didn't quite work out for me to do both things at the same time, so I decided to stay on for a year at the library, deliberately not making any art at all, and I was able to defer my master's degree for a year. Working at the library was a really great experience. The State Library of Victoria has a huge collection of resources, and I learned a lot about book handling and production while I was there, and I also got to enjoy walking through that amazing building every day. In retrospect, having a year off between finishing my bachelor degree and starting my MFA was a really good thing, and if I was to do it all over again, I'd definitely take a break in between the two. I'm also pretty glad I got to skip the honours year entirely because doing the MFA was definitely a better fit for me, and I may not have gone back to do it if I'd done the honours year instead. While the Bachelor of Arts in Printmaking was more heavily focused on learning techniques, the Master of Fine Art course was definitely focused on developing ideas and learning how to better communicate them. I realised during that course that I have a tendency to go in too deep with experimental ideas, and that if I wanted more people to be able to relate to my artwork, I needed to simplify my choices and learn how to better edit my ideas. I was and still am interested in making art about the connections between science and storytelling and it was super important to me that my work was accessible to normal everyday people. It can be very easy to slip into just making art that's only really interesting to other artists and that's not what I wanted to achieve with my art. It can also be easy to go too far in the other direction and only make art that doesn't challenge anyone, and I also didn't want to do that. It was a really valuable couple of years, and having the ability to study part-time while also working part-time was great. During my MFA I mostly worked in printmaking mediums, including etching, letterpress, lithography and bookbinding, and I made some of my favourite artist books during that time. They're all shown on my website, so click the link in the description to go and see the type of work that I was making then. When I finished my master's degree, I continued working for the web design company that I worked for while I was studying, and I kept showing my work and applying for different types of funding and exhibitions. Around that time, I simultaneously had a solo exhibition proposal accepted at the Mission to Seafarers Dome Gallery in Melbourne while my funding proposal for the same exhibition was soundly rejected. I really wanted to be able to do the exhibition, but between materials, framing and fees, putting on an exhibition can be pretty expensive. 
so I ended up successfully crowdfunding that show. I didn't have my own printmaking press at the time, so I did all my printing in an open access studio in Melbourne. Around the same time, I put in a proposal to do a talk at the Impact Printmaking Conference, which is a biennial printmaking conference that happens in different countries around the world. That year it was in Dundee, Scotland, and my proposal was accepted. So my husband and I flew to Dundee and had an amazing time, and because Australia is just so far away from everywhere else, we also planned a long holiday driving through Europe. This was my first time going anywhere overseas, and it was pretty great. It was also when we started seriously thinking about moving overseas, and we put plans in place for our move to Ireland in 2017. Before that happened though, and after returning to Australia from our holiday, I started a full-time job working at Neil Wallace Printmaking Supplies in Melbourne. It's also known as Neil's Art Store, and it's a specialist printmaking and paper shop, but they also stock a lot of painting supplies. Like everyone else, drawing and painting were the mediums that I started making art in, because they're just the most accessible art practices, but I hadn't really focused on them at all during my university courses. In order to give people actual useful advice about what they were buying, I needed to learn pretty quickly about painting techniques and methods and materials, and that's when I took up watercolour painting again. I'd also never really done any oil painting at all before that, I'd really just focused on acrylics, so I had to start pretty much from scratch there. Working in that shop and also at Melbourne Etching Supplies was a really great learning experience, and even though I already had a good formal education in art, I learned so much more there than I possibly could in any course. The combination of customer questions, professional artists coming in and explaining how they do particular techniques, and just being around so many different types of paper and ink and paint is not something that can really be reproduced anywhere else. It was then as well that I had the idea for this YouTube channel. It became pretty clear that students generally felt a lot more comfortable asking us shop staff basic questions than they did asking their lecturers. I guess they saw us as peers and were a bit less intimidating because of it. We'd also get some really interesting questions from self-taught artists who didn't have much access to professional resources. When I'd go looking online back then, there wasn't a huge amount of good, free, easy to understand information around, and in the back of my mind, I catalogued the idea of starting a channel about simple explanations for different techniques. Back then I was too busy with work and international move plans to really dedicate time to the idea. But when I flew from Australia to Ireland in 2017, I suddenly had all the time in the world because I wasn't legally allowed to work for 10 months while my residency application was processed. I started putting my ideas together back then and I made some of my first videos. A lot of those videos still get watched today and people aren't too shy to let me know that I talked too fast, my music was too loud and they didn't like it. I think I recorded my first voiceover directly with the mic on my computer and it just sounds awful, but as with all things like this, I learned as I went and I eventually got better audio equipment and as an offshoot of that, I'm now writing and producing my own music for fun. 
Previously I used my husband's music in my videos and now I'm recording and making my own loop packs and it's super fun and interesting. In 2019 we moved again from Dublin to Cork and when 2020 rolled around I had grand plans to finally get a regular day job again, except then, you know. Pretty much all my freelance design work dried up in 2020 as well, so I've been able to dedicate a lot of my time to making videos here. I've also been able to get my Patreon up and running, so if you like what I make and are able to support my work financially there, it's really, really appreciated. And that's pretty much where we are today. I hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse into my background in the arts. I'll leave off there and just paint for a while now, but if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. And if you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've done a couple of videos before where I've talked more about me than I have about art techniques. So if you'd like more videos like this occasionally, please let me know. I've listed all the materials that I use for my painting in the description and you'll also find links there for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook, my Instagram and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.